Hello everyone, I'm very glad that you could join us here today. My name is Nick Olivo, and over the course of the next half an hour or so, we're going to discuss how you can get the most out of Test Complete when you're working with Silverlight applications. Now before we get started, I want to make sure that everyone can hear me okay. So if you could please locate the Q&A panel on your screen, you should see it right like this. If it's not visible right now, you've got this small toolbar up in the top right corner of your screen. Just click on this arrow button to expand that panel back to its full size. And then just let me know if you can hear me. Just type the word sound into the questions box there uh, if you can hear me okay. All right, I see some folks are typing in there. Outstanding. All right, it looks like everybody can hear me just fine. And if you can see my mouse moving up at the top right at the corner of the screen there next to the Smart Bear logo, if you could just type in uh, mouse just so that I know that everybody can see everything properly. Perfect. All right, outstanding. Okay, so a few housekeeping notes before we get started with the session proper. First of all, we are recording this session, and you will be receiving a link to that recording either later on this week or early next week. So uh, if you have team members who weren't able to join us today, or if you uh, want to review some of the material, uh, you'll be able to do that. Second, there will be a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. One thing to note is that this question session is only for topics that we cover during the course of today's webinar. So if you've got questions that are not related to Test Complete and Silverlight testing, you're better off following up with your account rep or with uh, the support team to get those questions answered. All right, so to get started, I'd like to ask a question to you folks out there. I'm going to open up a poll right now. And what I want to know is what version of Silverlight are all you folks out there testing right now? If you wouldn't mind just checking which one of those guys you're testing with, that would be terrific. Uh, you know, and I can see a lot of folks are, are chiming in so far. We got 15% people. Oh, come on, we can get better than 28% people voted out there. Come on, guys. There we go. Now we're picking up. Uh, you know, it's funny. I've only got 4, 3, and 2 listed here. You may be wondering, well, what happened to Silverlight 1, Nick? Well, the funny thing about that is that Silverlight 1 was actually completely not automatable. In fact, the guys at Microsoft weren't able to even automate their own application because it was just not designed with automation in mind. And so ever since Silverlight uh, 2, they've been gradually implementing ways to make it possible for third-party tools and other automation vendors to uh, access those controls. All right, so we've got 78 people voted right now. We'll call that good. And we'll go ahead and I'm gonna close that down. And let's go ahead and share the results. Looks like everybody out there, majority of you folks out there are working with Silverlight 4 applications. And a handful of people are working with 3. And a very small percentage of you are working with uh, 2. And some of you are working with multiple versions. Well, that's great. Okay. Well, today the great thing is we're going to talk about Silverlight 4. We'll talk about some of the basics of how to work with that. And we'll talk about how to work with Firefox with Silverlight as well. I'm also going to show you guys how you can work with uh, Silverlight applications in out of browser mode. So if you have need to install those applications locally, Test Complete can work with that type of application as well. And then we'll touch on how Test Complete works with some of the older versions, specifically uh, Silverlight version 3. Okay, so let's start out with Silverlight 4. Now, Silverlight 4 applications are seen as open, meaning that they can be inspected uh, down at a very detailed object level, you'll be able to recognize the controls inside of a Silverlight 4 application just as you would with a, uh, a .NET application or a Java application or whatever. But in order for that to happen, we have a special TGAG patcher utility that must be run. And what happens is your developer runs this little utility against your Silverlight application. Now somebody out there may be throwing a red flag saying, Nick, wait a minute, what is that patcher utility doing? Okay. Basically, into, under the hood, a Silverlight application is a special file called a ZAP file, which is just a, it's a zip file, basically. And there's a bunch of DLLs inside that zip file that comprise your application. When this patcher utility runs, what it's doing is it's adding a couple of test complete DLLs into that collection of uh, files. So it's not modifying your application source code or anything like that. Uh, Put your mind at ease there. We're, we're just going to be adding in some helper libraries to bridge the gap between Silverlight and Test Complete. And once you do that, it makes it possible for Test Complete to view those applications as open. Now, I'm going to paste a little message into the chat box right now, which gives you a link on more information about that patcher utility that you can pass on to your developers. If you are in the future and watching this recording, you can go out to this URL right now, and that will take you to this particular 
uh, link. Otherwise, uh, just click on this button in the toolbar, that little blinking text box icon, and you'll be taken out. You can see the link that I just pasted in there. You can copy that and use it. All right, fantastic. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at how Test Complete actually works with a Silverlight 4 app. So I'm going to jump out of PowerPoint here. Already got Test Complete loaded. And we're going to create ourselves a brand new project right now that will test a Silverlight application. Now, again, this only applies to Silverlight 4. So I'm just going to put this little note down here. Okay, so let's start out. We're going to create a new project. And I'm going to call this the Silverlight Demo. And we'll click Next. And in our case here, we're going to choose the web type of testing. And we're going to go with functional testing of web pages. All right, now, in this dialog, we're going to go ahead and put in the URL to the Silverlight page that we want to test. I'm just going to paste it right in here. There we go. And I want to run in the 32-bit version of IE. All right, we'll click Next. And finally, you know, good old JScript. I'm going to pick that. Okay, so now my project's been created. Let's go ahead now and we're going to start recording. Now, just like with any other type of web test, Test Complete's going to minimize down to that recording toolbar, and then it's going to auto-launch my browser. And you can see that it's taking me right out uh, to the URL that I specified as soon as IE catches up with me here. Always fun when your website is the, the slow spot in the demo. Here we go. Um, Great thing is, you know, just like with all the other web testing, IE 5 through 8 is supported here, so no dependencies in browser version. Here we go, we're in our site. And now I'm just going to perform a very basic test case here. I'm going to start out, we're on our page, and the first thing that I want to do is verify that the data displayed in this grid is accurate. Now, for those of you out there, uh, you may not realize that Test Complete has a built-in checkpoint called a table checkpoint. And normally, this only works with Windows type grids, but here's the thing, Silverlight grids are Windows type grids, so that means that we're able to use this checkpoint with a Silverlight application. So I'm going to say, I'm going to call this my uh, orders data, click next, I'm going to select the table I care about, in this case it's this guy right here, so as soon as, there we go, we got that red box drawn around the object, we'll select that, okay, so Test Complete's going to capture a reference to that control based on its name as specified by the developers. So just like what happens when you're using a property checkpoint or an object checkpoint against a regular type of control, like a .NET control or a VB control or something like that, you can see we're recognizing it based on its actual name. In this case, it's orders data grid. All right, we'll click Next. And now, here are all the columns that we can verify inside with this checkpoint. And I want to verify uh, all this stuff. In fact, the only information I don't care about here is that expiration date, because those numbers may change. I don't want to bother with those. So I'm going to keep all the other information, the product, the quantity, the username, all that stuff. Click Next. All right. And then this is showing me all the data that's being stored off. All right. So this is a great way to verify large amounts of data very, very quickly. I'm just going to click Finish here. All right, so now that checkpoint's been added, so we're going to be verifying that content uh, when we hit this page. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and, and perform a bit of functional testing here. Let's create a new order inside of our system. So I click New Order, and let's see. Let's say that we're going to order some of the uh, screensaver product, and I want more than one of those. I want 75 of those, so type in 75 there. Okay, and we'll click off. Now you'll notice that when we changed that from uh, 1 to 75, this total field also updated automatically. And you'll see that the total is updating both the new quantity, the price per unit, and this discount field here, which is 10%. Because when a customer places a big order, we automatically give them a break on the price. So I want to verify that that total field is updating properly. So just like I would with any other application, I can create a property checkpoint that's going to verify the text of that particular item. So let me just go ahead and let's do that. Verify that uh, that control is displaying the text of 1350. So again, we've selected the object. And just like with the other controls, with the other languages that we support, Test Complete's going to fetch in the actual name of the control as specified by the developers. And then we'll be able to read a list of properties back uh, from that particular list. So just as soon as. Uh, Okay, it's, it's back on my screen, but I'm looking over at my other monitor here, and it doesn't look like it's up on your guys' screen yet. So let's give GoToMeeting a chance to refresh, and then we'll continue on. Um, now, once we've got this created, then we'll just, you know, we'll fill in some of the blanks here as well 
so that we can verify that, uh, you know, some of these other things. There we go. Okay. Wow, that was a slow refresh. Okay. Uh, we'll click next. And then we're going to look for the uh, value property here for the, shorten that up a little bit, W text. There we go. 1350. Click next. Okay, and that W text is going to equal 1350. We'll say finish. All right, and for a customer name, let's say uh, good old Barry Allen, and then we'll give in uh, one my street for an address. And then we'll give him a credit card of MasterCard. And again, I'm looking over at my other monitor. It doesn't look like GoToWebinar has refreshed yet, so we're going to give that a chance to catch up. There we go. Okay, and for a credit card number, let's give him card number nine. All right, so we've got all of our data entered here. We'll click OK. And that's what we want to do for our, our test case today. So let's go ahead. We'll stop recording. And now, just like what you're used to with the other applications, Test Complete's going to take a moment, and it's going to render all those actions that we just performed as a keyword test. I could have done this in scripting as well. Wouldn't have mattered either way, but um, you know, for right now, we'll, we'll stick in keyword mode. Okay, so now we've created our, uh, our test, so let's go through that. You know, just like what you're used to with the other actions, you get automatic screenshots for the test that's been generated here in the visualizer, so there's no question about what a particular test is doing. And again, we're recognizing all these controls based on their actual names as specified by the developers. So, you know, we're going to verify that we're in the product combo box. We're going to type inside the CNAME field for our customer name, uh, in the street field, in the address field. Here's the credit card button. So everything that we've worked with is just like it would be in a regular uh, Windows or web-based application. Now here's our checkpoint that I showed you earlier, the table checkpoint. If you ever want to see exactly what a table checkpoint's working with, you can just right click on it and say, uh, go to checkpoints data editor, and that will open up this dialog which shows you all the information that's being displayed. So if we needed to make changes, like if um, you know Sam Clemens changed his name to Mark Twain, we could just make that tweak right here. We don't need to recreate the checkpoint or anything like that. Uh, we could just make that edit inside the checkpoints data editor and go from there. Okay, so I'm going to put that back to Samuel Clemens, and then we will come back to the, <coughs> excuse me, I want to come back to our recording. Now, what I want to show you next is how Test Complete's storing elements for Silverlight inside of the name map. So let's just right-click on the CNAME field here, the customer name field, and we'll go to Show Object in Name Mapping Editor. That's going to flip over, take me into Test Complete's name map and just like what you're used to with the other types of applications you've got your overall object hierarchy shown up here then you've got the properties that are being used to recognize a particular control over here so for example that uh, edit order screen here's our card number field this is where the uh, Barry Allen's credit card number alright so that actual name of the control is card number we're recognizing it based on this SL object name property and then down here we've got our aliases that we could change if we wanted to make this a little more readable. We could call this customer name. I'm going to change that. Test complete will prompt me, hey, do you really want to do this? And would you like me to upgrade your tests to reflect that? We'll say yes. Come back into our test and you can see there we go. We've just changed that to customer name from C name. So the process that you've always known and loved with working with regular Windows and web-based tests holds true here as well. So no magic needed in order to get test complete to work with the uh, Silverlight application. In fact, let's go ahead, let's take a look at the object browser here and take a look at how Test Complete views the Silverlight objects. You know, I'm just going to expand this down a bit and you'll be able to see, okay, here are all the, uh, the elements of, that make up the Silverlight application and the ones that you want to pay attention to are right here, these ones marked SL object. This is the actual contents and again, the actual controls that you're going to be manipulating during the course of the run. So you can see here, here's each one of our columns inside our uh, grid. Here's the uh, new order button, then there's an edit button and a delete button. So all those elements that are currently on screen will also be shown here as well. Now, if what you're being shown in the object browser isn't enough, if, if you're expecting to see additional controls and you're not, then what you can do is come over into your project properties and you get to those just by double clicking on the name of your project right here. Come on down to the Project Properties tab, and then you go to Open Applications, Silverlight. And what you can do is check this extended Silverlight Object Tree switch. And what this does is if this is turned on, 
then the object browser is going to include all the Silverlight objects that are inherited from systems.windows.controls.control class, which means pretty much everything. So if that's enabled, then the tree is going to show um, all the controls that it can possibly find. We turn that off by default because a lot of times that's just introducing noise into the system and it may impact test performance. But if you aren't finding the controls you're looking for, try turning that on and seeing if that uh, makes a difference for you. Okay, so we've done that. All right, terrific. So now we've talked about recording your Silverlight tests. We've talked about the types of checkpoints you can work with them. We've explored them with the object browser and we've explored them uh, via the checkpoints and that kind of a thing. So now next question that I've got for you guys. How many of you out there, are you testing Silverlight with Firefox? Just go ahead and, and give me a, a quick yes or a no to that one there and, and tell me whether or not you are working with that. Okay, so we got 50% of you have voted and most of you are not working with Firefox with, with Silverlight. Okay, I'm going to give that another minute or so to go there. Just like the other versions of uh, other types of websites, you know, Firefox 3.0 through 3.6 is supported with Silverlight and Test Complete, so no problem there. Um, and there are a couple of things that we're going to need to talk about in terms of getting Test Complete and Firefox to play nice together. Okay, so we've got uh, about 75% of the, 74%, excuse me, of the vote in here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, close that down, and we'll share the results. It looks like the majority of you out there are not using Silverlight with Firefox. Um, so we're going to keep this part of the session pretty quick. Let me go ahead and hide that there. It looks like we're picking up on some background noise right now. So if any of you out there are not muted, please mute your phones now. Thank you. Um, just so that we don't uh, accidentally hear things that maybe we aren't supposed to. Okay, so we've got that. Great. Now let's go ahead and I'm going to switch over and let's talk about Firefox. Okay. So I'm going to bring up Firefox right now. And I'm going to go out to my my URL. Okay, where is it? There we go. Okay. And let's paste in our URL. Okay, so I'm going to have this complete take me out here. And the first thing I'm going to do is just look at this web page at the Silverlight objects here using the object spy. I'm just going to drag the finder tool right over here. And I'm going to try and select the edit order button. And you'll notice that all I'm getting is that red box around the frame. I'm not actually receiving any information. Oh, hey, wait a second. Test Complete's giving us a helpful informational note. And that note was that Silverlight objects in Firefox need to be inside, need to be made windowless. And that's just a special setting that your developers flip on when they actually compile the application. So if we look at the source code for this particular web page, let me bring that up, which is right here. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zoom in on this guy, and I'm going to highlight here. This parameter that shows up inside the page is currently set to false. It needs to be set to true in order for Silverlight and Test Complete and Firefox to be able to play together. So let's go ahead. I'm going to make that change right now. We'll set that equal to true. I'm going to save my, my page. I'll refresh my page on this side. And then we'll try looking at this again with Test Complete's Object Spy. So here we go, we'll bring that up. And this time around, after a second, we will see that Test Complete is able to draw the box around the Edit Order and the Delete Order button. Uh, it may take a second for it to actually pick up the change that I made, but it will do that. Um, now the great thing here is that once you've made this change, that's it. That's the only tweak that you need to make, and then Test Complete will always be able to work with this control or the sets of controls, I should say, uh, going forward. And there we go. You can see the red box is being drawn around the delete order button uh, right now. And it looks like there may be a bit of a refresh problem again with, uh, with GoToMeeting. Um, so we'll give that a second to go. And then, all right. Okay, there we go. So now, Go to me and pop back, and it did throw the red box around delete order. I don't know if you guys got to see that. We'll wait for the object spy to come back uh, with the information about that. But the great news is, here we go. Okay, so there it is, delete button. So Test Complete was able to recognize it. And just like what you saw earlier inside of IE, we're going to see the same information in the object browser in Firefox. So you know we can look at all the controls inside of the various processes that are running. Now. Uh, let's, and let's actually do that. There we go. So there's Firefox, and then here we go. Here are all the, uh, the controls inside of that. You can see right here we've got Form 1, 
and then if I keep expanding down the tree, we'll see all the elements that are associated with that. So same process that you've always known and loved uh, will be followed here for Silverlight in Firefox, just like it is in IE. So now you may be saying, well, okay, Nick, but you know, earlier you had it test complete automatically invoke a browser right out to that URL uh, and had it automatically launch Internet Explorer. How could I do that for Firefox? Well, easy enough. All you got to do is double click on the tested apps node right here inside your project. You can right click on the uh, add web page there. And you can see here, add web page, and then it's just a simple matter of putting in your page's URL like that, choosing your browser, and there you go. Now we can have test complete automatically invoke Firefox, take us right out to that page, and go from there. Okay, so that's the, the basics of working with Firefox and test complete and Silverlight. Okay, so let me jump back into a, a slide real quick here. One note on Firefox 3.6.4. Okay, if you are using this specific version of Firefox, there is some additional configuration that needs to be done. Uh, for those of you who are watching this webinar in the future, go on out to this URL right here. Otherwise, for those of you who are with me live, I've just pasted in another link into the chat window. You can just click on that link if you need it. Go on out and check out uh, the information that's there. Uh, again, only if you're using that specific version of Firefox do you need to worry about this. Okay, so let's move on. Now we're going to talk about Silverlight 3 and out-of-browser type technologies. Uh, the great thing about Silverlight is it does give you the ability to just right-click on an application and say install, and that will just drop what's on the web page onto your desktop. And that may be something that you need to test in your, your various uh, travels. So the great news is that Test Complete can work with out-of-browser applications, and it can work with Silverlight 3, and it works with those versions a little bit differently than what you've seen me doing today so far. This, it's going to work with a technology called UI automation. Now, you remember back at the beginning of the session, I mentioned that Microsoft had been gradually improving Silverlight's accessibility. You know, version 1, you couldn't even touch it. Version 2, you could do some stuff. Version 3, they gave you more. And they gave you that some stuff and more via this UI automation interface. And that's what Test Complete's going to be using in order to recognize and manipulate controls in an out-of-browser environment or in a Silverlight 3 environment. So let's go ahead and let's, let's take a look at that. So that no longer applies to Firefox. We are in Silverlight 3 and out-of-browser mode. Okay, so I'm going to minimize test complete down for a second here. And we'll get rid of Firefox and this guy and Internet Explorer. We'll minimize him. Okay, and you've noticed I got this little Silverlight Orders out of browser application sitting right here on my desktop. If I double click this guy, I'll be able to just invoke a local copy of that Orders application that you saw me working with just a moment ago. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go back into test complete and let's start recording a new test. Okay, as always, Test Complete minimizes down. The great thing about this is when I invoke this application, Test Complete should be, oops, <laughs> see, and this is why you always got to remember to turn off the auto run flag when you don't intend to actually auto launch an application like that. Okay, so we're re-recording now. I'm going to launch the Silverlight out of browser application. Here we go. And let's go ahead and perform, um, you know, another scenario here. Let's say that we want to place a new order inside this version. So let, let's see what that type of recording would look like. All right, so we're inside. And let's just do a couple of quick things here. We'll want the family album product. Um, you know, we'll, we'll order 10 of those this time around. Uh, we'll give this to, I don't want to do Barry Allen again. We'll do Hal Jordan this time around. Um, and then we'll give Hal a street address, which will be, uh, say, 90 My Street. And we'll give him a state, good old uh, Massachusetts. And we'll give him an American Express card. Okay. And uh, he can have card number one. There we go. All right, and we'll say okay. All right, so now we've just placed that new order in there. Let's go ahead and, and stop recording. And you'll be able to see how Test Complete is recognizing these controls based on the UI automation side of things as opposed to the, uh, the other method that we were working with earlier. Okay, so very similar to what was going on here. All right, so first and foremost, we had that extraneous browser called a Firefox. I'm just going to get rid of that. Um, and then here, we're invoking... SL Launcher, and that's the local version of the Silverlight engine that runs on your system. So you can go ahead and test complete will launch that. You see right here we went out to, in this case to a URL, but it's one that lives locally. And then here we go. Every action that we performed, again, there's another entry inside the uh, test. And just like what you saw earlier with the uh, web version, 
we're still working with those controls based on their names. So C name, street, state, card number, all those items are just like what you saw inside the actual browser version of this particular element. Okay, now let's take a look also again at the visualizer images that you're getting here and again you, you can see exactly what's going on just like you would if you were looking at a regular Windows or web-based application. All right, now if we come over here into the object browser, I'm going to refresh that and let's take a look at how we see the, the Silverlight elements there as soon as this expands. Uh, so there's SL Launcher, that's our guy right there. Okay, and here we can just drill down and again we'll see all the controls inside here just like they would be inside of our uh, web page. This time around though you'll notice we don't get those, whoops, well, that just refreshed a little faster than I was expecting it to. Uh, we don't get those SL objects anymore, like you saw when I was working with a Silverlight 4 application. Now we're getting UIA objects. So this is using Microsoft's UI automation technology in order to recognize these controls. So that's the difference that you're going to experience when you're working with Silverlight 3 and out of browser technology. Instead of getting the SL objects, you're going to be seeing the UIA objects. The one thing to keep, that's just one thing to keep in mind as you're going along. Okay, now the other thing to keep in mind is if you are working with Fire, uh, Silverlight 3 and Firefox, there is one other setting we need to flip on. And if you come over here, let's go into the Silverlight Demo Project Properties here, and I am going to go to the UI Automation section down here in the Open Applications tab. This is where we can tell Test Complete how to work with um, UI Automation stuff. Now, here we go. By default, Microsoft Silverlight is already entered inside the UI Automation section here. So this is the class of window that we're going to be looking at when we treat these controls with UI Automation. Microsoft Silverlight covers both Silverlight 3 and out of browser technologies. If we want to add Firefox to this, what we need to do is click Add, and in this dialog right here, we type in Mozilla Window Class. All right, and now, by uh, enabling that, Test Complete will be able to treat Firefox, or excuse me, Silverlight applications that are running in Firefox will be able to use UI automation technologies there. For the handful of you that are still using Silverlight 2, you can also uh, work with them as well, uh, but you're going to want to check this box and type in ATL uh, into this uh, dialog right here, and that will allow Test Complete to use UI automation with uh, my uh, Silverlight 2 type applications. All right, now I've got a, a question in here coming from uh, David who's saying, I'm not seeing SL objects in my name mapping, only UI objects. Is that because I haven't run the patcher? And yeah, most likely, David, that's the case. Uh, the patcher is what gives the SL objects, or gives Test Complete the ability to recognize those SL objects. Uh, if you haven't run the patch, then you won't be able to see those. Alternatively, you may be using a Silverlight 3 type application, in which case uh, you know, you're only going to be able to see the UI automation type objects. Okay, so that's how a real whirlwind tour of how you can get Test Complete to work with Silverlight technologies in both Internet Explorer and in Firefox. So let's go ahead at this point and let's turn things over to the questions you folks have. Um, you know, let's see, uh, Silverlight 4, uh, Gaten asks, what about Silverlight 4 and out of browser technology? Okay, so out of browser technology is always going to be recognized via um, UI automation. So right now we uh, Test Complete won't show SL objects for out of browser technologies that are developed in Silverlight 4. It's just going to show the SL objects for uh, applications that are actually running in the browser. Uh, so th that's uh, the difference there. Uh, one thing to, to keep in mind folks is Again, all the questions that you field today, please keep those to the topic. If you have questions about, you know, Test Complete running against Java applications or things like that, uh, again, this isn't the right forum for those. Please um, keep those uh, questions elsewhere. All right. Now, uh, okay, and all right. No, nope. that question looks like we've already answered that one. Terrific. Okay. Um, if you do have any other questions, things that weren't answered today, then you can send those over to your account representative. Uh, if you have questions about Silverlight that were not addressed today, then uh, please you know, send those in to your account rep, and he or she will coordinate with either myself or the appropriate technical resource to ensure that we get answers to you as quick as possible. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you. For, uh, let's see. Uh, Dominic is asking about uh, are there any limitations with testing Silverlight in Chrome? Uh, right now, Chrome is not a supported browser with Test Complete, so we uh, aren't able to do that. We can only work with Firefox and IE. 
Um, I see a lot of folks are asking questions that are not related to Silverlight, folks. I'm, I'm not ignoring you, but I'm not going to be able to answer those questions today. Um, so if you have questions related to Visual Studio integration or uh, security or things like that, then this is not the right place uh, to ask those. Uh, a, a recording of this session, again, will be made available later this week or early next week. Uh, just watch your email for those. And in the meantime, folks, thank you very much for your time and attention today. I hope you have a great holiday season.